Oh yeah, welcome back once again. You know, I've had some thoughts about how to do some of this stuff, and um, after reviewing my mm, previous method, I've decided to take the base interactable, and instead of having it communicate when it sees the player, which is just crazy, really, um, I've instead uh, uh, have it such that it now, if you will check here, we are on... Uh, we mask on the player, we are still on the interactable layer, but we have no signals connected, none at all, so none of that stuff. No need for it, really. Really, there's no need. Um, uh, but I am keeping the interact type, and I think what we're going to do is, let me, let me go ahead and move that. We need to move that to what I would prefer to be like a singleton, I suppose. Um, let's see what we can do there. Let's a new script. And let's call it, uh, let's call it util. Call it utils.gd, huh? Could not create a script in the file system. That's because I, there we are. Let's open utils.gd. Um, and let's go back, actually. <laughs> let's go back to the base interactable. Let's remove this. Let's go to utils. And do that. And then we need to go into the project settings. Go to auto load and add utils into that. And then we'll go back into base interactable. And I believe we can say utils dot interact type. Is that correct? And then utils dot interact type. Oh, and let's see. Did we put it? Oh, look, it did, we didn't add it. Sorry about that. Got to click the add button, ladies and gentlemen. Got to click the add button. That's very, very, very important. You must click the add button. So uh, we want to check if area.type is equal equal to utils dot interact type dot name. Right? Then we want to do this. And likewise, we want to do the same here as well. So, you know, there's probably better ways to do this. And really, this is, again, just we're just, we're just kind of uh, ballparking it right now. Um, and I'm not sure. Let's see. Don't interact. Mm, yeah, there we go. OK, so that works, right? So now we can check and see. Uh, what our interact type is. Now, something else I've done. I didn't like how the player would continue to uh, grab, hold onto the chain whenever it was on, whenever he was almost off of it. So it looked like he was actually not holding onto the chain and just floating in midair right below it. So um, what I've done is I've added an extra area 2D, and I call it. A, I've added a collision uh, shape down here called climber, and you can see it right here. And I've positioned it thus. I've positioned it like that. And I've changed the area 2D to have a mask of play or a layer of player and then a mask of interactable. And I've taken the mask off of the, uh, uh, the, the kinematic body 2D so it no longer has uh, a mask of interactable. It's not looking for interactable anymore. So the only thing that we'll get um, when, anything, when, any, when any interactable comes into this area, it will, be, it will trigger the method on our player, which... Um, as you can see right here. So these are the ones that I was I didn't really explain, did I? So I'm checking to make sure the collision layer is indeed the one that we're looking for. I think uh, though, I thought that's what the mask was for. I didn't, I didn't think I would have to do that. Let's uh, let's, but I don't believe it works if I don't do that. Let's try this. This should technically work because I'm masking everything except for that particular collision layer, which is the interactable one. But see, then I get this error right here. But it, so it's getting into here that uh, that pickup is getting in there. But that that let's check those pickups real quick. Let me check the key and let's check our collision layers. And perhaps we shouldn't do that. Actually, no, we're supposed to do that. 
aren't we? Yeah, we have to, because this thing has a script on it. So when it's picked up, it screams to the, no, it doesn't. Okay. I guess that's the problem. Whenever, if something is masked to, all right, well, let's just turn that off. Um, clearly, I am not doing things correctly in this regard, yes? I'm going to turn off that mask. So let's check now and see if things work correctly. So we still get the key. We'll turn this off and boom, we've got area 2D, the door. Oh, we've got to do the door as well. Right, the triggers. In other words, the triggerables. They are colliding. Okay, so that mask needs to be turned off as well. So no to the player mask. The base triggerable on the door should also be a no as well. Yeah, right here. So player, no. None, none, zero, none. Okay. Go check this. Watch out and go through and uh, climb. Okay, so we're working now. Now, uh, as to the question of whether that is actually correct or not, well, that remains to be seen. But we have, again, see a, a more functioning, and you can see as soon as he gets to the bottom, he slips right off, which is exactly what we want. Now, let's go to try to understand how to have him let go of the chain, uh, even when he is when he's on it, because as soon as he enters another chain, if he has already, anyway, there's problems. There could be problems here. So let's go here, and we need to, and when we're climbing the chain, we should say, uh, if input action just pressed jump, So we want to go here. If we've just pressed the jump button, then let's change state to player state. And that's another thing I didn't tell you about, is it? Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry, so sorry. What I've done is I have taken, uh, instead of just setting the state to the player state, we should start over. Oh my. What I've done is uh, I've just added another method. So it's just a change state method. But what's nice about this is anytime I change a state, I can add things in here I want to do. And uh, that'll become evident here in a minute because we're probably going to want to change. We're going to probably want to going to save the previous state as well. So I've just gone through and I've named that enum to player state right up here. Um, again, just to save time and to be more clear. Um, so now anytime I change the state, I'll use that change state method. And what, what I want to do is um, I want to do a, uh, I want to have a previous state. And the reason is I anticipate us needing the previous state. And then all we do with the previous state, when we change the state, we just say previous state equals to, equals to the, the state, that state. So then what we can do, um, like for the climb chain, we go to change player state jump. <clears throat> um, then when we see the climb chain, which is uh, actually it's right here, isn't it? If area 2D entered and change, if, if state is player state jump. So then we would say, we want to say and uh, previous state not equal to player state. So if we were climbing climbing the chain before we do not want to go back into the climbing state again let's see if that works we should be able to press the jump button and let go of the chain so if we can come over here to a chain and I press the jump button and indeed it does let go of the chain which is exactly what which is exactly what I want now the next thing to do would be to have have um, have the player actually jump if you are pressing to the left or to the right. So if we're changing the state here, 
then perhaps we can do the following. If we press the button, then let's take the horizontal as well. Let's see if that works. That might actually work. So if we come up here on this one, climb up, press to the left, not exactly what I want. So if we change state to player state jump, if air control, but, uh, we need air. We want to set our air jumps equal to zero here, by the way, because we don't want to be able to, do we want to be able to air jump off of the chain? Per, uh, maybe. Let's go ahead and set it. Uh, uh, when we jump off of a chain, yeah, let's just set it uh, here. Uh, and when we come in, uh, yeah, we still want we still want to check horizontal here. When the action is pressed, and we change the state. Um, We've actually had to call jump because remember jump checks, which is sort of works to our advantage uh, in some in some instances. Uh, it actually, uh, since we change the state, that'll come around next frame, and this action won't have been just pressed. So that's why um, we we call jump now because that action just pressed when we get into jump will be true. What we probably should do is we could say the following. We could say, so there if uh, velocity dot x, in other words, if, if if there is, if velocity dot x is not equal to zero, then let's call jump. That way we should jump to the left or the right. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's show you. So if we just jump up here and we push the button, then we're just gonna fall off, which is perfectly what we want. Push to the left and jump. But now you see, you see what's going on there, right? He's clicking right back to the deal. Um, so anyway, let's, uh, let's look at this. Print, change state to uh, percent D, I think it is. And we'll say, uh, not comma, it's a uh, new state. Let's see what the new state is. Now, jump, 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 jump. Change state from one to five, so we're on five. And if we jump five to one. So if we're on five to one, change state from one to one. There is our issue right there. So where are we changing state to jump again? That's the question. Change state right here. Why would we do that? What is that? What does that even have anything to do with it? No, no, bad, bad. Let's take that out. Take that out and make sure it doesn't break anything. That doesn't make sense to me. It was still good there, right? So that jumps off correctly. It's like we're sucked right to the, I like that. Um, run that again. Probably want to make that area 2D, this climber, maybe make him a little bit smaller as well so his area is not quite as big so that he kind of doesn't snap as much. And if I jump to the left, yeah, see that works. So I'm not sure why I had that in there before. Forgive me. Uh, and then I guess, uh, yeah, so this is working. Fantastic. And then I can just hit, hit jump to drop right off. All right, so sorry about some of this stuff, uh, some of the masks and whatnot. Uh, obviously was not, were not correct, but we got that all sorted, I think. And then we have a sort of a, at least it's a way to do what we're doing. And so it looked, you know, he's, um, he's doing his vine climb and I think pretty nicely. I like, I like the way it feels. He, uh, he smushes right onto the vine. Um, and then, of course, what we would rather be able to do would be to, now that I'm thinking about it, what would be nice would be to be able to jump to that vine instead of these. So what you could do, what we could do 
and we are probably what are we we're 19 minutes so that's not too bad not too bad what we could do is we could we could actually record the position of this vine so we've got vines so we could say var vine x we could say last vine x equals zero like that and what we could do is when we land on one of these vines here right here then we would say last vine x equals area dot global position dot x and then we would take this instead of our jump here instead of uh, saying is the previous state this we could say and last vine x Oh, let's do this. Let's make this an or here. I'm thinking an or would work better. So in last vine x not equal to uh, area dot global position x. Basically, if we're if we're not on, we don't want to we don't want to jump to the same chain. We don't want to be able to we want to be able to let it go let go and jump from that one to another one. So let's let's see if we can make that work. So if I jump to, yeah, I don't have a chain that's, I don't have a chain that's long enough here. Let's tell you what, let's do. Let's go to that level really quickly, and let's create on a tile. Let's create some area here to jump around on. Huh? Get some here, there. Okay. So let's do that. And let's see what we can do about jumping from those two. Yeah, that that seems to work. Okay. Uh, try it again. I need to be able to just plain old reload it, shouldn't I? Oh my goodness. How horrible. All right, try this again. Here, and then here. Oh, and then here, and then to there. So that seems to work just fine. Let me do this. Let's drop off of him, and let's jump back up on him. Jump. Okay. That looks like it's working. So now we can actually jump in the air from one vine to another, and we immediately stick to it, which I think is, I, I, that is at least what I want in this particular instance. Um, and at this point, falling will not allow us to grab onto uh, a chains, but we can, of course, add that into the, uh, into the falling. So with that, it looks like we've implemented our vine climbing, etc. Uh, it's a wonderful thing, and uh, we'll see you next time.